for the return to season episode, I reckon we will bring the show back with another banger. X from Mega Man X versus Optimus Primal from Transformers Beast Wars. Successors to iconic blue robots, Mega Man and Optimus Prime, who not only carry their names, but look pretty similar to them. Their stories are set in the far future, where their predecessors are distant memories, and the wars they fought were over, and new robotic species that are the next evolutionary step of their kind. Both had humble beginnings, but were thrust into the wars that determined the fate of their planet, despite not being one for fighting. They brought new forms to their race that bared some resemblance to organic life. They fought manipulative and cunning robot leaders, Sigma and Megatron, who want to assimilate others under their will with the help of a virus, and want to destroy all organic life. Their final battle with said villains would lead to them sacrificing their lives for the greater good, bringing world peace. And they would eventually become spiritual guides for the next generation. This matchup sounds based as hell, despite never seeing Beast Wars. I do have it on my watch list and a link to a not-so-sketchy site that I can watch it on, but knowing me, I don't think I'll get to watching it anytime soon. But still, I like this matchup a bunch. I think what I like about this is that considering Primal isn't that big compared to the usual Transformer, there's no size issue, which is cool. You can have a projectile battle with X's Mega Buster and Primal Plasma Cannons, and maybe even a melee fight with Primal's Mace and, if you want to include it, the Sea Saber which X has used in the past. It's not standard, I can imagine, but I think it would make for a good melee fight. And while Primal is still fairly bigger than X, I think the slightly small versus big dynamic can be interesting to work with. I think it's called the David versus Goliath? I don't know. I also would like to see how Death Battle could include Primal's Beast Mode to the fight. I just like the sound of this matchup. I don't really care that much for Cosmos versus X, or is it Cosmos? I don't know. On top of not knowing Jack about Cosmos, at least I knew about Primal's existence somewhat. And X versus Samus is whatever. And I don't know any other matches for Primal other than Movie Primal versus Movie Knuckles, which sounds neat, I guess. So yeah, this is the best for both, in my opinion. 3D could work for this, not quite sure who wins this. Likely ready for X on this. Episode 10, let's get some real indie game representation in this season. Shantae from Shantae versus Sash Lilac from Freedom Planet. Hair whipping indie game heroines with a purple theme and a strong sense of justice. Both are half breeds, Shantae is half genie and half human, whilst Lilac is half water dragon and half unknown species. That's the basic gist of this matchup, and I like it. It's the best for both, in my opinion. Another Shantae matchup I like is Shovel Knight, which is probably the most likely Shantae matchup, but I just fight with this one a little more, and I like Shovel Knight as an alt. And Lilac doesn't really have any alts I like, except for Spyro. So yeah, this matchup will do. I also think it would be some cool indie game representation in the show. Of course, for the next big indie game rep in Death Battle, I would have had Sans vs. Judge before this. But I've talked about Sans vs. Judge a lot, so here's second best instead. I also think it can be a cool fight. Of course you can have them attack with their hair, and there's probably a lot of fun stuff you can do with Shantae's transformations and Lilac's abilities. You can have Lilac try her Dragon Boost, but Shantae counters it with her Elephant transformation. You can have an underwater battle with Shantae's Mermaid transformation and Lilac's capability to swim. I was going to say you can have an aerial battle with Shantae's Harpy form and give Lilac some wings. This is pretty much based on this scene from Retro Rumble, which I recommend you check it out by the way. But apparently those wings were for the Super Dragon Boost in Freedom Planet 2 and were cut from the game. So I don't know if an aerial battle would be possible, but it would be cool. There's probably a lot more, but a fast paced high action fight would be fun to see. Make this a sprite episode because that's the best style for this matchup, though I don't know if Death Bell would use already pre-made sprites or make custom sprites. If they use pre-made sprites, they'll probably use Shantae's sprites from Pirate's Curse. 
in which I prefer they use Lilac's first design sprites. Her second design sprites could work, but not only that I kind of prefer Lilac's first design a little more, I just think those sprites clash better with those Shantae sprites than her second design. I don't know, it could just be me. But if they go custom sprites, then go with her second design. Also, this matchup is pretty debatable because I've never really seen a clear cup winner decided in the Depot community, and also because I don't know who wins. But I'll be betting on Shantae, I don't know why, just have a hunch that she'll win. Either way, it's a cool matchup that gives good rep to indie games on the show that I'll like to see one day. But maybe do stand for just For episode 11, we have Kratos from God of War versus Azura from Azura's Wrath. Wrathful demigods who swore to protect the people they care about with a group of warriors before they were one day betrayed by the gods they thought they could trust. This would result in them losing their families and beginning a path of revenge against the gods. Both can get so legendarily angry that it lets them break the limits of their bodies, defy their wor world's rules, or even brush off death. However, both see this power as a curse as they are constantly haunted by their inner darkness and need to avenge their families. Both were finally able to let go of their fury once all the gods were slain, with their children being a key factor in helping them overcome it and be at peace with themselves. They supposedly die at the end of one of their original stories, only for them to live on and be granted a chance at being a father again. Yeah, I know Kratos vs. Dante is a thing, and while I've grown to like the matchup a little more now, I just fight with Kratos vs. Azura more. It's my preferred for both, and I would like to see it as an episode one day. As long as it doesn't happen through a Champions Ballot or Tournament of Champions type deal. It was in the ballot and got second place in the 3D poll from what I've heard, and it was in the tournament and got second place again. At that point, just let it happen on its own terms. Anyways, I think the fight can be great. I'd imagine the fight would start with Kratos attacking with his weapons while Azura uses his fists. But as the fight goes on, Azura has been through all his transformations and managed to disarm Kratos of all of his weapons, leaving him with no choice but to start throwing hands itself. Maybe have their rage build up to the point where when they're at their angriest, just them screaming at each other causes the area around them to shake, and just by clashing fists, they create craters on the ground. The fight sounds like it can be fun and destructive. I do understand the issues that most have with this matchup though, mainly with the dynamic and how they're both scaled in their games. See, Azura is seen going to cosmic levels of power in his games, while Kratos hasn't sh really shown that level of power in his games. Even if he was cosmic level in the God of War lore, most people would probably power scale him through what he has shown in game rather than lore. So this could lead to some think the dynamic is weird because their in-game power levels probably not mesh meshing well, if that makes sense. Now you could give Kratos his in-lore scaling to somewhat match Azura, but to some that would be weird to see Kratos at an unusual cosmic level. Or you could downplay Azura to match Kratos, but then what's the point of using Azura? In my opinion, I don't think seeing Kratos going cosmic isn't bad, but I understand that it might be a bit weird for others. But I personally think a fight can be cool, and there's probably a way you can make it work with their different powers, levels, maybe? Uh, the best idea that comes to mind is Azura blows up a planet and throws a mountain-sized chunk of fit at Kratos, in which Kratos just obliterates it with a punch, or catches it and throws it right back at Azura. Could that work? I don't know, that's the best I can come up with that could work, uh, that I think could work. Either way, I love this match and think the fight can be great. 3D is my go-to for this matchup, of course. As for who wins, it depends. If going on based on their in-game feats, then Azura wins because of his actual showings of cosmic feats. 
But if you include lore Kratos, which will likely be used in the death battle, then I think it's debatable. I heard Kratos is universal in the past, and from what I know, Azura is only galaxy to solar system level, if I remember correctly. But Azura also defeated Chakra Varden, the creator, who created the world, which probably can be interpreted as him creating the planet they stand on, or the universe. I don't know, I think this matchup is pretty debatable. I'm rooting for Kratos since I do like him more, and I'll probably bet Death Bell will have Kratos win too, since they'll probably believe in the lore arguments for him. Either way, no matter who wins, this would make for a great episode. So for episode 12, we have a matchup that I think would work as the Halloween episode, but I have another Halloween-themed matchup for that spot. So think of this as a pre-Halloween episode. If, uh, uh, yes, if that makes sense. Anyways, we have Luigi from Nintendo versus Pac-Man from Namco. Now, I know this matchup isn't really popular now, but fuck you, I still like this matchup. I know some people complain that the connections are too simple, mostly because they think it's just retro video game Ghostbusters. Even if that's true, I personally think these two don't really need an in-depth matchup. I think a simple matchup with simple connections works well for them. Besides, there's more connections than just retro Ghostbusters. Retro video game heroes who fight with power-ups and weapons designed to combat ghosts, with some of their equipment being gifted to them by an old scientist who's a close friend of theirs. Both are rather naive and good-hearted, yet they also have quite an appetite. Both are destined from birth to be heroes thanks to a prophecy about a select few saviors meant to protect the world. Both have had to save their friends and families from a ghost king bent on world domination, and despite their rivalry with ghosts, they've occasionally made friends with them every now and then. Now to me, these sound pretty solid. To my understanding, these connections do composite pack a little bit, mostly with ghostly adventures, and personally, it's not a problem to me. I think it works decently, though I guess I can understand if people don't like that. Besides pretty solid connections, I think you can have a f cool fight with this. With a variety of weapons and abilities they can throw at each other, and then being capable of throwing punches, I think the fight can be f cool. You can even have Ghost interrupt the fight Frank vs. Leon style and have Luigi and Pac fight the Ghost off while fighting each other. You can have one attack with their ice power-up and the other counters with their fire power-up. You can do stuff with the Power Flower which turns Luigi into Fanish Luigi and Pac's chameleon form which gives him the ability to become invisible. You can probably have Luigi weaponize ghosts against Peck, thanks to the latest model of the Poltergeist, allowing him to ragdoll ghosts. You could even have a kind of kaiju battle with the Mega Mushroom and Paxilla power-up. Or Pac Kong. Paxilla probably works too. An idea for the fight that I've heard from Inkling Main, who made a decent defense post on the matchup, where Pack goes planet Pack and scares the shit out of Luigi, but Luigi powers through that fear and fights for his brother's sake. Then Pack would try to chomp down on Luigi, only for Luigi to hold him off with sheer strength and a Mega Mushroom. And you can have a quick scuffle with that. I think that can be cool to have for the climax. So I don't know if there's a version of the Mega Mushroom that makes Mario characters the size of planets, and you'll probably have to sacrifice the Mega Mushroom versus Paxilla fight, but let me think this fight can be cool. I just think the fight can be fun and the matchup fights a lot. I know Luigi vs Shaggy and Pac-Man vs Felix the Cat exists, but I like this more. But to give those matchups credit, I don't have any inherent problems with those matchups and think they are good odds for Luigi and Pac. So, and this just might be me, I feel like people use Luigi vs Shaggy as a reason to discredit Luigi vs Pac-Man. Not everyone, but there's probably a few people who do. Which honestly doesn't sell me on the matchup that much when it's used as a tool to shit on another matchup. I say that, but then again I probably have done something like that in the past. My usual hypocrisy. And on top of that, the animation potential isn't that interesting to me, since Shaggy for the most part doesn't fight, unless you give him that fight state, I'm not calling it Ultra Instinct, fuck off, in Legend of Phasmosaur, which isn't standard, and Multiverses, which I can't say I'm a fan of using, but I guess it could work. 
But besides that, he mostly runs away from danger, which I don't think makes for an interesting animation potential. I know Death Battle made it work with Scooby vs. Courage, and I don't doubt they can probably make it work for Luigi vs. Shaggy, but when one character can fight while the other mostly runs and barely fights back without non-standard or non-canon material being used, it doesn't sound that interesting of a fight dynamic to me. Not to mention, Luigi has a lot of stuff to work with, while I don't think Shaggy has much to work with, though I could be wrong. Now again, I don't hate Luigi vs Shaggy, I still consider it a good all. And if you like this matchup more than Luigi vs. Pac-Man, more power to you. I'll respect your opinion as long as you respect mine. That being said, Luigi vs. Pac-Man has a lot going for it that interests me, and it just vibes. So it goes without saying that this is the best for both in my opinion. I think it can make a great sprite episode. I think Luigi wins, which is cool. Also, if anyone thinks this matchup only exists for a Luigi W is dumb. And anyone who likes the matchup only because it's a Luigi W are dumb, in my opinion. Anyways, cool matchup. Hope it happens one day. It could also work for a Halloween episode. But again, I got another thing in mind for the Halloween special. Speaking of for episode 13, the Halloween episode, we have Freddy Fazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's versus Frankenstein's monster from Frankenstein. Now, this was a matchup I at first thought was weird when I first heard of it, but I very quickly, like the same day I learned about it, quickly loved it after seeing the discussion about this matchup. The connections are two monstrous beings created by scientific methods by using the dead. Frankenstein's monster, who I'll call just monster for the rest of this, is made out of the remains of dead people, and Freddy has the soul of a dead child powering him. Both are driven by a great tragedy, driving them to be vengeful monstrous beings, attacking everything they see due to the things that happen to them. This makes them animalistic and savage, yet highly intelligent. The one who caused this to happen is also a malevolent scientist, Victor Frankenstein and William Afton, who is enthralled by bringing the dead back to life and giving immortality. After a while of terrorizing other people, they are eventually put out of their misery by letting go of their anger and dying off, Monster being implied to have offed itself, and Freddy being burned to death. There's also a cool theme of icon of classic horror versus icon of modern horror. These connections and themes are pretty solid to me, in my opinion. And the animation potential sounds like it can be really good. I think the setup should take place at Freddy's Pizzeria, and you can have that happen by having Monster being chased by a mob, and it hides in the pizzeria to get away. And from there, you can have Monster and Freddy encounter each other in some way in order for the fight to happen. Speaking of the fight, I think it can be pretty fun. I think their vengeful and animalistic personalities can bounce off each other pretty well, which could drive them into killing and taunting each other. You can have a moment where Freddy tries to bite Monster's head, but it stops Freddy's jaw with its arm, or it tries to pull Freddy's jaw apart with its hands. This could lead with them wrestling with Freddy trying to bite and Monster trying to get him off, while also trying to tear him apart. You can have moments where Freddy plays mind games with Monster by disappearing into the shadows and toying with it. Maybe include his iconic laugh to really mess with the monster. And Freddy can use this opportunity to get the drop on Monster, and maybe even jump scare it. You can also have these two weaponize their surroundings, which I think can be cool. You can have them throw chairs, tables, and even arcade machines at each other to show off their brute strength. It can also be a cool reference to how Freddy can throw arcane machines in the novels. I know it's not a game feat, but honestly I'm fine with using the novels for Freddy. Anyways, you can also have a moment where Freddy throws a pizza at Monster, referencing FNAF World. But unlike FNAF World, it does nothing and just slides off the monster, probably pissing it off more. I'd also like a moment where Monster finds its way into the office and tries to adapt and figure out how it works. And it finally finds out how the doors work, and as Freddy charges at it, it closes the door on his face. I think that'll be cool and kind of funny. That's another thing I kind of like about this match. You can have the monster kind of freaked out by the technology of the pizzeria, but slowly adapt to its surroundings and figure out how things work, like the office. This could lead to another moment where monster maybe finds the power and shuts it off, or destroy it, causing Freddy to power down. 
This gives the monster a moment to charge to attack Freddy, but before it can land a punch, the soul that possesses Freddy wakes him up and blocks or dodges monster's attack, to its surprise. Something like Mechagodzilla vs. Dragonzord, this could lead to a final brutal beatdown. Another reason why I like this matchup is because it can have a pretty emotional ending, with the loser beaten nearly to death as the winner stands tall, probably a bit damaged from the fight. And before the winner can land a killing blow, the loser goes off a sign, almost like they're saying thank you. This is where the winner realized they're not so different. They were both normal people who were forced into new bodies after their deaths by some guy with some crazy ambitions. And they're forced to live in this prison forever until they die. And after a moment of processing everything, the winner finally lands a killing blow, giving a pretty sad but bittersweet ending, with the loser being freed from their torment and with the winner still trapped. If done right, I think this could be a v one of the most emotional episodes of the entire series. And that's why I love it. With solid connections, theme, animation potential, and an emotional ending, it's a matchup that I can wholeheartedly say that it's easily my preferred for Freddy and Monster. I know Freddy vs. Bendy, Slenderman, and Lucky the Rabbit exists, but I honestly prefer Springtrap for Bendy's FNAF opponent, Freddy vs. Slender isn't interesting to me, and Freddy vs. Lucky is decent, but that matchup kind of fell off for me. And I don't give a shit for Freddy's other matchups. This matchup just sounds more interesting to me, and is pretty unique in my opinion out of all of Freddy's other options. I know the monster probably has something better, but again, I'm more interested in this to care for its other options. Anyways, for animation style, ideally I'd like it to be either sprites or 3D, but for this season's lineup, I'm gonna throw a curveball and make this a live action episode. I know that may sound weird and damn near impossible to pull off, but I think it can work. They just need to find a guy who can play a good monster and person who can do good makeup for the monster, and find a person who has a good Freddy cosplay. I'm sure there's someone with a good costume. Sprites and 3D can still work, and I prefer those styles for this matchup, but I think live action could work and would be cool. As for who wins, from what I've seen, this matchup is pretty debatable. Though it depends on what you use for both. I think you can probably use games and novels for Freddy, and movie and book for Monster. Or you could go with just game Freddy vs. movie Monster. I don't know what you'd go with, but either way, I think the matchup is pretty debatable. I think Monster is most likely to win, but I'm kind of betting for Freddy more. I don't know, I'm just going to say I'm rooting and betting Freddy. Either way, this happening as an episode on Death Bell or any show for that matter would be great. Also, you can have Luigi vs. Pac-Man here, but I'll put Freddy vs. Monster. For episode 14, we have Shadow from Sonic the Hedgehog vs. Mewtwo from Pokemon. Two genetically engineered life forms created to be the ultimate slash strongest something. The ultimate life form for Shadow and the strongest Pokemon for Mewtwo. Both were created from the DNA of a powerful being, Black Doom and Mew, and wield incredible amounts of power. Both turned against humanity after losing a young girl they loved, Maria and Amber respectively, and gaining amnesia. Both initially wrought havoc that nearly doomed the planet until seeing the air of their ways. This is honestly a great matchup, and I'm surprised Death Bell hasn't done it yet. What's that? They already did this already? No, no they didn't. They've only done two episodes with Shadow against Vegeta and Ryoko. And while those episodes are decent and Shadow probably doesn't warrant a return, I wouldn't mind seeing Shadow appear for a third time, and Mewtwo is my preferred returner for him, as well as my favorite Shadow matchup in general. And I'd like to see Mewtwo appear on Death Battle too, it's kinda overdue. And of course Shadow is my favorite matchup for them. So yeah, let's have this happen. I think Shadow's chaos abilities and Mewtwo's psychic abilities could make for a cool and entertaining fun. 
I imagine them just throwing energy blasts at each other and teleporting around the place. Maybe have Shadow pull out a gun on Mewtwo and fire a few shots, only for Mewtwo to catch the bullets with their telekinesis and either return to sender or make them drop like flies. If they do return to sender, have Shadow just take the bullets like nothing, because I'm pretty sure the dude is bulletproof. Another thing I think can be cool, if not a little stupid, is have Mewtwo pull out Spoon.png to attack Shadow, but Shadow takes out the Black Sword and has a little sword fight with the Spoon. I know it's dumb sounding, but I think it'll be cool as hell. You can have a high speed chase with Mewtwo flying and Shadow keeping up with his speed and rocket shoes, or his motorcycle. And of course have the two fight while at it. Oh, and of course you can't have a Shadow fight without his signature Chaos Control Backhead Kick. And at the end, you can have them fight in their other form, with Shadow in his super form and Mewtwo in his Mega Evolution. I don't know if you use Mecha Mewtwo X or Y though, maybe Y since it looks cooler in my opinion. You can have them clash in the air, you can have Mewtwo pick up and throw a chunk of a mountain at Shadow only for him to spin dash right through it and maybe make it explode. You can probably have them take the fight to space and then fight there. There's a lot you could do. I don't know, this match just works and I think Depo could cook with this matchup. I think sprites are the best style choice for this fight. You could do 3D, which can also work, but I'll stick for sprites for this. As for who wins, I have no clue. Mewtwo probably scales to the higher up stuff for Pokemon, but I don't know where that gets them. And the power scaling for Sonic characters are pretty confusing, so I'm stumped on who wins this one, like with every other matchup on this list. But I'll be rooting for Shadow because he's up there as one of my favorite, if not my most favorite, Sonic character. Mewtwo is cool though, and I wouldn't mind if he wins. If Shadow wins though, have him say sayonara. I, he was kind of robbed of that opportunity in Shadow vs. Ryoko. Anyways, I love this matchup, I hope it happens one day. And if you still think Defo has already done this as an episode, you're wrong in gaslighting yourself into thinking it happened. For the penultimate episode, we have Henry Stickman from the Henry Stickman Collection versus The Second Coming from Animator vs. Animation. Both are stick figures who were created in the early 2000s, whose ventures began pretty small with Henry robbing a bank and The Second Coming just meeting the four other stick figures when he was created. And over time, their adventures became bigger and bigger, where they meet new friends and new enemies, like a newly upgraded foe whom they killed by Disintegration, Right Hand Man, and Dark Lord, a bigger villain who wears a golden object on their head, Reginald and King Orange, and their lackey, Right Hand Man again, and Purple, who they befriended in some cases. Also, before their big fight with their newly enhanced foe, they gained a more powerful form that allowed them to beat them after all seemed lost for them. Henry gained his cybernetics after nearly dying when he was dropped into the ocean, and the Second Coming gained his awakened powers after Dark Lord killed his friends and nearly killed him. Both of their creators had a hand in Newgrounds back then, with Henry's first game, Breaking the Bank, being on Newgrounds, and Alan Becker started his journey of animator versus animation on Newgrounds, and even said that he owned his career to Newgrounds. They also constantly make references to and use abilities and weapons from other popular media. Honestly, I didn't really care for this matchup at first, but slowly started to like it. It's not really my preferred for Henry, I still prefer Heist Markiplier from a Heist with Markiplier, but this one seems more likely anyways. So yeah, this will be a cool and creative fight. There's a lot you can do with Henry's options and Second Coming's arsenal. I think at the start you focus on Henry using the options he gets to attack the second coming, while the second coming focuses on being a more skilled fighter and have him avoid Henry's attacks and attack him when he gets an opening. Maybe you have a moment where second coming snatches one of Henry's items while he's choosing and have it be an item that Henry was going to pick. And as the fight progresses, the second coming starts using his own arsenal, including the Minecraft stuff. And as the climax comes by, you'll have Henry with his cyber enhancements, probably not standard, but shut up, and his stan, and the second coming in his awakened form, where they have an epic and destructive final clash. 
I think it can be pretty cool. What I explained probably doesn't go in deep with the creativity that this matchup has, but anything I'll probably say has already been said by multiple people who've talked about this matchup, and I don't feel like stealing any more ideas than I already have. If I had to come up with something creative for the fight on the fly, I think it would be cool to have a moment where one of the options Henry gets is his own Minecraft block, and both Henry and Second Coming start building stuff to fight each other. Maybe have them build castles with cannons that fire TNT and have a cannon fight. And we've seen Red make a giant stick figure that can be controlled with the Minecraft block. Maybe have the two do that with their own blocks. I think this can be very cool and creative. I hope no one has already mentioned that in a video already. Also, have a moment where Henry does the distraction dance, causing Second Coming to dance too. And after a few seconds, have Alan Becker nudge Second Coming to break him out of the trance, and then he tags Henry. I don't care if that counts as outside help, that'll be funny. Anyways, there's a lot more you could do, and it can be a fun time. The animation style is, of course, gonna be hand-drawn, because I don't think sprites or 3D works well. As for who wins, from what I've heard, Second Coming now wins because of the newer episodes in his series. I'm not sure how, but I'll take people's word on it. But yeah, this can be a very cool episode with a lot of creativity put into it. But surprisingly, this isn't the only matchup on this list with lots of potential for a creative fight. And that would the season finale. For episode 16, we have Maxwell from Scribblenauts versus Sackboy from Little Big Planet. I can't find the connections for this, but I'm pretty sure its core theme is kids from video games all about using your imagination. And that's why I choose this for the season finale, because out of all the matchups here, this probably has the most creative potential for a fight. Of course, you can switch this with Bowser vs. Eggman if you think that makes more sense for a finale for a season like this, but I'll stick with my choice. But yeah, there's a lot of creative stuff you can do for this fight as long as you have the imagination for it. It can probably start off small with a simple fist fight, but then Max starts summoning weapons to attack Sackboy, resorting to him bringing out his own power-ups and summons. Have shit escalate to the point that there's an army battle with all their summons. As for what real creative stuff they can do, I got no ideas of my own since I don't have the imagination for a matchup like this. Though I guess that's due to the fact that I've never really played these games. Well, Scribblenauts, I know I never touch. I do vaguely remember playing a little bit of Little Big Planet Free, I think it was free, in a museum when they had some games set up in there. Though I was kind of confused on what I was doing, so I didn't go far. But besides that, never played the games. And that's probably why my crappy imagination can't think of anything for this fight. Solo just takes some ideas from Larry Winwood, who did an excellent rundown on the matchup in his Top 10 Most Wanted Death Battles video. I highly recommend you check his video out for a better explanation on this matchup. In fact, go watch that video now, and come back to see me completely butcher his explanation. Anyways, into the creative shit you can do with this matchup, you can have Sackboy summon one of his animal robots in Low Big Planet 2, with Maxwell responding with his own mech suit. Sackboy can use his creative mode to flood the entire area with water, which Maxwell can summon a submarine and sea creatures to fight Sackboy. Maybe Max could use some negative adjectives on Sackboy, which in desperation he responds by getting angry and self-destruct, seemingly killing him until he pops back through a checkpoint, catching Max off guard. You can also just have them summon a bunch of explosives and turn the fight into a Michael Bay movie. And that's just some of the cool things you can do with this fight. And I couldn't even think of any of that myself except for maybe the blowing shit up one, but I also got that idea from Larry anyways. I hope this doesn't count as plagiarism. But yeah, this matchup sounds like fun with a lot of potential behind it. And I hope the Death Battle team has the imagination that I don't have to make this an entertaining and great episode. For the style of the fight, I think sprites works the best for the animators, so I can be more creative. Though, I can probably imagine you can have multiple styles work like in Saitama vs Popeye, but I'm not sure how you can do it naturally. If they do go with multiple styles, I think they should start with sprites, then at some point the animation becomes hand-drawn, and then it becomes 3D, then it becomes either CGI claymation or hand puppets, and then back to sprites. 
Again, not sure if you can make it work naturally, but I think that can be cool. Though I'll stick to sprites for this. As to who I think wins, I'm not sure. I think both get to multiversal, but Maxwell gets higher with DC Herald scaling. Personally, I don't agree that Maxwell should scale to mainline DC. Maybe he can scale to his world's versions of DC heroes and villains, but I have a hard time believing he can actually scale to someone from the mainline DC universe, like the fucking Anti-Monitor. Scribblenauts' version of the Anti-Monitor has multiversal capabilities anyways, so I don't think he needs proper DC Herald scaling, in my opinion. There's probably arguments to it being valid, but I personally don't think Maxwell should get proper Herald scaling. Though maybe Deathbell thinks differently and maybe agrees with Maxwell scaling to DC Heralds. In which case, if they do give it to him, then Maxwell wins. If they don't, then I don't know who wins. I guess I'll say Sackboy wins, because I think he can be tricky to take down with those checkpoints, unless Max has something to counter it. And he probably has more advantages, I don't know. I will say though that my friend, someone who's a Sack person himself, loves the Low Big Planet franchise, so I'll root for Sackboy for him. But no matter who wins, this matchup is guaranteed to be a fun time, and a great way to end this season of video games. And that is my lineup. Is it good? Probably not, but I hope there's at least a few good matches on here that people can agree would be a great episode. Speaking of which, what matchups on here would you be the most hyped for? Let me know. And what would you put in a lineup like this? Let me know too. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.